Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Department of Forestry, Fisheries and the Environment has refused to provide Car Powership SA with environmental authorization for its three powership projects. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss this development. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. Can you provide us with some background to the department's decision? Well, the environmental impact assessments were submitted to the department in October last year. This was in the run-up to the bidding process for the risk mitigation independent power producer program. That was a, an emergency procurement program launched by the DMRE, the Department of Mineral and Energy Resources, uh, last year to try and get 2,000 megawatts onto the grid by the end of 2022. So Car Powership uh, was obviously looking at putting in their projects as part of that bidding process and therefore had to go through the environmental impact assessment uh, along with all the other bidders and started that process last year and had submitted their final report to the uh, department for assessment uh, in about April this year. We know that a month earlier, they were selected as getting the lion's share of the risk mitigation program uh, over a thousand megawatts of the 2000 megawatts that was on av available under the program was awarded in terms of preferred bidder status to car power ship for projects in Saldana Bay, Klucha, as well as Richards Bay. This, uh, so it's three projects involving about five vessels. These are all gas to power uh, vessels. So uh, there would need to be LNG, a regasification of that LNG, and then that would be used by these ships uh, to produce electricity controversially for 20 years. So the power purchase agreement for all the risk mitigation projects was 20 years, including these power ships, which are more really linked to uh, uh, power emergencies in many other countries, either because of war, or because of uh, uh, you know, immediate shortages. Uh, and then countries usually have fairly short term periods with these vessels. But we were looking in order to have a uh, what they call a technology agnostic round, they had to have a, 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 a bidding process that allowed all the different technologies to bid, uh, including renewables uh, projects linked to battery storage, as well as linked to, uh, to smaller gas. Um, so they, the view was you can't have, uh, uh, you had to have a one size fits all in some ways, in terms of the process, it had to be a 20 year PPA for all, including the power ships. What has the department actually said about this refusal? So basically it comes down to them assessing uh, the application and its competence. And on a couple of uh, levels, the car powership uh, applications failed. The most notable being in the area of public consultation. It's very unclear where these public consultation took place. We know that both uh, ocean living communities as well as uh, environmental groups have raised concern about these power ships um, and uh, there was a feeling there was a lack or there was no evidence of proper public consultation at any of the three sites so that's really the biggest issue uh, but there was also some elements of the actual uh, environmental impact assessment specifically related to noise pollution and mar marine noise pollution so how the the noise from these vessels would affect both human and fauna, uh, whether that fauna uh, is above land or in the marine life. Um, and uh, it was felt that that, that uh, assessment was not properly done. How has Car Powership SA responded? Well, they've initially uh, sent out a message that they will be appealing uh, this uh, decision to this refusal. Um, and it was a fairly angry press release, basically suggesting that there were a number of uh, interest groups, lobby groups that had uh, spread misinformation about their project. So they are not happy with the outcome at all. And uh, it looks like they will go through some form of appeal. What does this mean for the risk mitigation IBP program? Well, I think initially for the power ships uh, component, which is, as I said, the largest component of the risk mitigation program, it really does throw this into doubt. These projects had to reach commercial close by the end of July, which is, you know, these that's really a, a, not a long time away from now. And, you know, this was just one element that had to be sorted out, the environmental impact record of decision, the, the authorization had to come through. 
that hasn't now come through. And that would be an issue, a condition precedent for, you know, these projects are generally very heav heavily debt financed, project financed. So there's an element of equity, but banks would need that condition fulfilled in order to uh, have these projects made bankable so that they can uh, give the debt. So this is really throwing a spanner in the works. It's not clear that a, uh, an appeal will be completed by the end of July, which is this firm deadline, because this is to get uh, power into the grid very quickly. We're wanting to get this power from not just the power ships, but the other projects from the risk mitigation into the system from about August next, next year with a long stop date at the end of 2022. So these projects really need to start getting moving. And if you can't get to commercial close by the end of July, well, then I think that's it for the project. They, 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 they can't meet the key criteria of coming into the grid before the end of 2022. But we'll have to see now, I suppose, uh, how quickly the appeal is lodged and how quickly uh, that appeal is processed and if they are able to overturn it. But at this stage, it looks um, not very good for car power ship South Africa in terms of these three projects. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.